time of celebration is Come Ye Thankful People Come, hymn 694. Please stand as you are able and join in the singing. unite in the historic confession of the Christian Church. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
please be seated. I want to invite you into a time of prayer with me. If you would, please bow your heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. God of grace and mercy, we gather today to give you praise, to give honor, to give glory. We humbly come this morning in hopes of fellowship and communion with you. We acknowledge, O oh God, that what doesn't sit within us is the ability to be in your presence without you making a way, granting a place for us. And because you have done so, O oh God, we praise your name this morning. This week, O oh Lord, help us to express our thanksgiving to you. Help us to see all the splendor of your hand that is around us. Aid us, O oh God, in giving thanks. Fill our hearts and our souls with courage to do the things that we need to do and to say the things we need to say this week. O oh Lord, we give thanks for all the many blessings that we have received from your hand. We also acknowledge, O oh God, that there are so many places around the globe that are hurting, suffering, grieving, have no hope. Grant to them, O oh God, your peace. Continue your work of salvation that brings wholeness to all. For this church and for all the churches in this area, O oh God, we pray that you continue, got, continue to guide us in ways of walking that leads to obedience, that leads to wholeness, that leads to a sense of knowing that your presence is with us. God us all, we pray, O oh Lord. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his followers to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is Now Thank We All Our God, hymn number 102. Please stand and sing with us.
worship God with his tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to clearly see what you have given us and help us to joyfully and generously share it for your glory. Amen. standing for the scripture reading which comes from 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 through 18 rejoice always pray continually give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus the word of God for the people of God, be to God. the peace of Christ to be with you Again, we welcome you here today to worship. We'd like for all of you to please register your attendance. And if you would, pass the peace of Christ with one another.
now dismissed to Children's Church. I don't know if y'all were aware that the space on the uh, carol choir, the space between the back line and the front line was about this much. And they had sticks. 
And so uh, I considered changing the sermon from Thanksgiving to one of uh, restraint and discipline and patience because there's a lot of boys on the back row and boys and sticks uh, <laughs> could be a weapon. So let's pray. Well, God, we, uh, what we pray for is that in, in these remaining moments, the text that was read, uh, as it echoes around this place, we want it to be more than just sounds. We want it to be the gospel. And so we know in order for that to happen, um, your Holy Spirit has to be a part of that. And so if you need our, our permission uh, for that to take place, uh, we say yes to that. What we ultimately hope for, O oh God, is that um, the gospel reigns inside of our hearts and our minds and our life. And that um, what is created is something that looks more like your image in the world. Uh, that, that's what we hope to accomplish. And if in these remaining moments, they can be used for that process, so that when we leave here, even if it is to the smallest of degrees, uh, we look more like you, then so be it, O oh God. That is what we pray. And we ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, we all are aware that this week is Thanksgiving week, and so for many of us, we will spend this week uh, doing a number of things. Uh, we will, some will be traveling, some are traveling, have already traveled and are there. But some of us will be leaving this week to visit family and friends to celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, some are, this week comes as a few days of, of rest and maybe needed days off. Um, time to be with family, time to be with friends. Uh, some will use this week to overindulge. Uh, I know that I will. Uh, some will use it uh, to relax, maybe watch some more football, uh, maybe just reflect on things. Uh, but this is Thanksgiving week for us. And on one level, it shouldn't be any different than any other week of our life. Because for Christians, Thanksgiving should be a way of life. And so to highlight one week over the other 51, uh, for us really should be that much of a difference. Sometimes it is. And so in order to help us with Thanksgiving, I, I, I want to retell you the story of the original Thanksgiving. You, you remember, some of you might have to dust it off, uh, the idea of pilgrims on a ship, the Mayflower, Plymouth Rock, 1620. Actually, the story starts before then. July 22nd, 1960, there was a boat that left Holland, the Speedwell, to make its way to Southampton, England, carrying 35 people. Many of them were seeking religious freedom. They were to meet up with a number of other people that were on the boat, the Mayflower, and together both boats were to leave to this new world, some religious freedom, some uh, adventure, some seeking advantage in life. Their plan was to leave in August of that year. As soon as they set out, the speed in the middle of winter. The last person, person didn't leave the ship for another three months. March of the following year. The first winter almost destroyed them. Due to the cold, malnourished people, illnesses. In December of 1620, six people died. In January 8, in February 17, in March 13. Now remember, it was only 102 plus the crew that made the journey. Four entire families were wiped out. Only one family did not time to remember, remember those loved ones that had died. All, remember now, all but one family lost somebody. But they chose a, another direction. They chose a Thanksgiving celebration. Some of that was to boost morale. So they, with the Native Americans, gathered corn, five deer, a number of birds, and they played and celebrated for four days. That's significant. There aren't many things you control in this life. 
Well, really, there's only one. You can control how you will respond to the situations around you. And like them, for us, Thanksgiving is a choice. A choice that we make. One of my favorite persons in all of the Bible, both Old and New Testament, is King David. It's really a hymn of thanksgiving. Now, it would seem like that would be appropriate for him. I mean, after all, he's one of the two kings in the, in the golden time of Israel's, Israel, Israel's history. King David and then his son Solomon, they unite the kingdoms both north and south. And so under their leadership, it is the grandest of times for them. And so it would seem appropriate, or at least it would seem easy for someone of that status to write something like that until you look at his resume. Until you know all of the story of King David. Many of his children hated him as a father. One even tried to kill him. Leads an active revolt against his father. One of his son, sons actually violates one of his sisters. And then the brother of that sister kills the brother. You remember the story of Absalom and Amnon? He knows what it's like to lose a child at childbirth. And for the majority of his adult history, he spent more times out of his house on the run than he slept in his own bed. In the beginning, that was with Saul. Later on, it's with Absalom. People slandered him. They mistreated him. They were jealous of him. And yet he pins a song of thanksgiving. I mentioned this last week, but it's worth repeating. It is so easy for us in our society to see all the things that are wrong. And yet, for those who belong to God, it should be the other way around. I mean, after all, what does the New Testament say? That you're, you, me, we're children of God, we're part of the family of God. And, and Jesus actually says, those that belong to me, they hear my voice, they know my voice, they see my handiwork in the world. And so, for us, it should be easy to see all the splendor of God in the world. And yet... Probably the default mechanism for us is to see the things that are wrong before we see the things that are right. If you can't see the things that are right, often they're right in front of you. It's hard to be thankful. So we're at this week of Thanksgiving. So how, how, do, we, how, do, we, how do we become thankful? How do we choose Thanksgiving. I want to help you. If you were to write down the five things that were most important to you, what would they be? Maybe events, people, experiences, activities. What are the five things if you were to write them down? Most thankful for. Would they be things like uh, freedoms? Maybe just the windfall of being born at the time you were born and living in the day and the place now. That's been a windfall for us. One of the uh, greatest joys of uh, seminary was meeting people who would eventually become missionaries and who, who are now sent and serving all around the globe. And about every year or two through email or maybe through conferences or things of that nature, we have a tendency to catch up with each other and how things are going in different ministries of people that we've met about 25 years ago. You know what one of the greatest needs or, or the greatest struggles uh, in ministry for people who serve outside of our country? The vast hopelessness that exists. They, it's a windfall for us. What we just wake up and enjoy. How often we take that for granted. What about life? 
physical life. How many times do you wake up and the first thought that comes through your mouth and, 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 and in your mind is another day? You know, we don't realize how important that is until all of a sudden there's someone who quantifies our life in terms of days or months. And then all of a sudden it becomes incredibly precious. Would you be thankful for that? What about job? Family? People who, who share the same history as you do. Which means both the positive sides of that, the negative sides of that, but, but things that they, they share common heritage. And so often can be supports in times of need. What about friends? You know what friendship really is? Friendship is when someone opens up their life and they allow you to be a part of it in hopes that you would do the same for them. That's what friendship is. And it's a gift. Are they on your list? What about uh, church? Faith? Salvation? God? If you were to write a list of the things you're most thankful for, what would they be? That's a start. Then do the next step after that. To not only have before you a list, maybe of people or things that you are most grateful for, but then to have the courage to express to them how thankful you are for their investment in your life, for their love, for their friendship. Can you do that? You know, we, we sing a song, it's a, a hymn, and we, we talk about it in terms of prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what pain we bear, needless pain we bear, all because we don't carry it to God in prayer. You know, the same thing could be said about how we express thanksgiving. How much joy is forfeited because we're afraid. Afraid to express what's closest and dearest inside of us to somebody else. That is not weakness. It's strength. And the effect is that it will draw them into your life. And it leads to joy. You can choose to do that. When's the last time you've gotten on your knees to give thanks to God? You, you know what grace is? You know, we, we like to describe and define grace as unmerited favor. That, that's really, that, that, that's, that doesn't encompass the word. It is God's love and mercy and care and activity in all of our lives. And there's not anything we can ever do to merit it or to make God move. And yet, but out of His goodness, He cares for you. You can choose to do that. You know, the text that Grace read for you says, uh, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And in all things, give thanks. It's a choice you make. You have the opportunity to do it this week. But it should be more than just a seven-day event or a one or two day of celebration. It really should be a way of life where you see His handiwork, His splendor given to you. Choose thanksgiving. Choose gratitude. Not just for today or this week, but for the whole of your life. It should be easy for us. 
It should be. It's a choice you make. So may it be for you today. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh God, help us. Help us to see, to acknowledge, to notice. And then for some, oh God, to, to make the jump from not just seeing. Maybe that's the easy part. But to expression. God, I know that there are some that that seems like a mountain too high to climb. If there's a way that you could convey directly to one or to those that are here that struggle with expression, assure them of your presence. Give the words and the actions that are needed so that you receive glory, so people are brought closer, and so that we live a life of gratitude and thanksgiving. Oh God, would you act and move inside of our lives in this way? And we ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. Our hymn of consecration, you'll find it's, it's hymn number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth. We're going to sing the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the sixth. I want to invite you to stand as you're able. Hymn number 92, first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. benediction. Mm -hmm.